Start this one off with uh, Sir Spooks. It's titled Top 10 Scary Videos That'll Scare Your Pants Off. I mean, who knows if I'm wearing pants? You, you guys can't see that far now, so I might be ahead of the game. <laughs> All right, you know what time it is. It's time to turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, cut up with something special. Let's get spooky. Hello everyone, my name is Sir Spooks, and Hello. today we'll take a look at the top 10 scary videos that will scare your pants off. Yes, your pants will actually fall off somehow. So, let's begin. That's a good thing we're all wearing something comfy, huh? The Grain Fall Tunnels are a mysterious series of tunnels located in Grain, Kent and were initially constructed all the way back in 1868 to defend the confluence of the rivers Medway and the Thames during a period of tension with France. However, the tunnels were eventually decommissioned by the United Kingdom <coughs> in 1956 and shortly thereafter they were demolished. However, still to this day, you can visit the Grain Fort tunnels although they are strewn with rubble and they are not the same as they were a hundred years ago. Nevertheless, there's still a location of interest for many, including YouTuber Steve Ballard, who decided to document his findings in a video he published online in April of 2020. In the video, Steve is reviewing the footage that was filmed first person while in the tunnels, and he tells us that something creepy was filmed down there. After a few short seconds, you'll see exactly what it is. Take a look. Should I figure out what grain, uh, grain fault? It's being played about half speed. Whoa. There is undoubtedly something there, but the question is, what exactly is this figure? Of course... I mean, it could be simply explained as, okay, the light. Okay, this light right here. Kind of like bluish tinted light. Has to be coming from somewhere, right? So it could be coming from someone behind the guy in the front and it could just be casting a shadow of his side profile and as he moves it could just look like someone stepping out of frame that's me being logical okay cause you know full on skeptic here just saying then you have the non skeptic that's a freaking ghost bro Many believe this to be a shadow figure, which makes plenty of sense considering its appearance. Or could it somehow be someone else's shadow? It could also be a ghost, and of course, there's the possibility this was a setup. But what do you think? Was there really a shadow figure lurking through the green fall tunnels? Let me know what- Um, it's ancient. God only knows what's happened down there. Anything's possible. I mean, when it comes to historical places, a lot of stuff happens. Just what do you think in the comments? <clears throat> I 
I'd like to thank Chilling App for sponsoring today's video. The at chilling app. That's very gross. It's chilling. <laughs> Kevin Summer uploaded video to his YouTube channel in December of 2018 and provided context, stating that his friend's brother was home alone vacuuming the house, which is allegedly 100 years old. He says that every time he would come back into the room after leaving it, the closet door would miraculously be open. After a while, it seriously freaked the man out, which is quite understandable, so he decided to set up a video camera in the room to try to capture it live on camera, just so we can get some peace and understanding. What happened on the footage scared the man so much that he ended up fleeing the house immediately. So what could he have possibly captured on camera that scared him so much? Well, let's have a look. At first, everything seems to be going quite well. The closet door remains closed for a long while, but eventually it opens all by itself, and we can see clear stain that nobody opened it. The closet is completely empty, so how is this even possible? It seems like the uploader himself has no idea, but it certainly is a mystery that will leave you scratching your head looking for answers. Okay. I would be more apt to believe that it was a ghost if he could have got the whole door. I mean, someone could have been down on the floor. Because, I mean, you notice at the beginning of it said that it was muted due to a song playing on the radio. All right. I've uploaded to YouTube and there has been songs and things and you have them dub over it with another song. I mean, you, it happens. So, they could have muted it to try to block the sound of someone scuffling around on the floor. I'm just saying, I, I would be more apt to believe it if I would have seen the whole closet door. I mean, there was enough crack down there, someone could have put their finger in there, slid it, been like. And then when it got open, you seen it kind of struggle a little bit, like it was stuck or something. And that's not where someone could want. Maybe just. Then it slams right there at the end because they just went. Boom. I'm just saying. Nah, I know, I know. They're, they're, I'm probably wrong it's probably a closet full of ghosts why a ghost would haunt a closet i don't know i stopped believing in the book man when i was two so but you know i would be more apt to believe it if i seen the whole door that's Let's all just hope that wherever this man is living now his closets remain closed as they should be In this security camera video recorded at an undisclosed warehouse, the clip shows a metal gate that is seemingly locked up by a padlock. The uploader provides some context by stating that before the video clip started filming, a person was at the gates and noticed the padlock was firmly locked, causing them to go back and get the keys to unlock it. Five minutes go by and then this happens. This is definitely a very bizarre video. 
as you can see, the padlock actually seems to twist and unlock itself before the gates finally open, all by themselves. Unfortunately, we never see the employee come back to find that the gates are now open, but I can only guess just how weirded out they were when they made the discovery. This video has an indescribable sense of reality to it that doesn't look faked or altered in any way. But maybe that's just me. What do you think? Yes. Did this gate really open all by itself? If so, how? Or yeah. do you think that this I... whole thing was a fake? I... Okay, I, I can see it being fake if there was, you know, magician string and they're just pulling it, but the lock twisting... I don't see how you could fake that. And I'm pretty sure that's just security cam footage. I mean, ain't like they can go into the security office and, like, cut it right out there, twist a little bit, come back, you know. Okay, that one I believe. Be sure to let me know your opinion below. I believe below. that Yep. I would quit. I want to go back there. Nope. A woman on YouTube named Annie Bennett says that ever since she moved into her new house, she has been witnessing some seriously scary and mysterious things in the dining room, always happening during the night, particularly 2.15 to 2.30 in the morning. She says that it happened so much that she has surprisingly learned to simply live with it. But even though she is used to these events transpiring on a nightly basis, she decided to... Yeah, 2.15 to 2.30 in the morning, you're not using your dining room. To set up a video camera to see if she could show her YouTube subscribers exactly what she has to put up with while in the comfort of her own home. Take a look and see what Annie experiences at night. Oh, crap. How about pooed? <laughs> oh. I can't imagine how terrifying it must have been to hear this for the first the, the most terrifying part of the whole thing on me was when the thing slammed down. I about pooed all over myself. Time. I lie. Sleeping in your bed, trying to get some rest, when all of a sudden, your piano begins to play itself. In the description of the upload, Annie says that she was told that there was a lady that used to live in this house before her, but she ended up passing away just one year before she moved in. So could this be the ghost of the previous homeowner? It is entirely possible. After all, it would certainly explain how the piano is playing itself, as well as all the other... Get rid of all of it. Anything that was there before I was there would be gone. I'd sell to someone else and let them worry about it. What is that? Strange activities. Piano. Plays music on its own. Fun for the whole family. 100 bucks. Perhaps this is just a friendly ghost wanting to get some piano practice. Either care. that, or it's all a carefully planned hoax. Let me know what you guys think. I don't like it. That's what I think. The 
YouTube channel 4man04 has been on the platform as early as October of 2007, and ever since their inception, the group has frequently been uploading videos relating to paranormal investigations, haunted house explorations and plenty more. In one video uploaded to their channel on February 28, 2009, the crew is investigating an old building located somewhere in Ohio. It doesn't take long at all before the group starts to suspect that perhaps they are not as alone as they think they are. And in a few short moments, you'll see that they definitely aren't. Take a look at the terrifying things they encounter. Anybody down here? Jesus Christ. Did you see that? Yeah. I keep hearing, I keep hearing a faint voice, I don't know if I'm, I don't know. Was this the spirit of Mary Lou hiding from I, I, I can't tell, it, it's shot on a potato, I mean, like three frames per second kind of potato. We mean you no harm. It's truly fascinating but also terrifying just how many strange and mysterious things happen to the group in such a short amount of time during the investigation. From freaky faces appearing in shadows and old ladies seemingly hiding in the building, this investigation is one of the freakiest finds from the early days of YouTube. It is worth noting that the 4man04 group is still active to this day, continuing to make paranormal investigation videos, so I definitely recommend that you check them out. They now use the Potato 2.0. Does the name Waverly Hill Sanatorium ring a bell to you? Yeah. Well, if not, it's one of the most haunted sanatoriums in the entire world and has been featured on this channel numerous times in the past, and for good reason. You'll be hard pressed to find a YouTube video about the place that's not creepy. It seems like nothing good ever happens in there, and this video by the YouTube channel Live Sci-Fi further proves that sentiment. In the clip, a group of individuals can be seen and heard talking amongst each other, while hesitantly looking down a dark and eerie corridor while inside the asylum. For a long while, it seems as though perhaps nothing scary will happen to the crew. But of course, that is not entirely true. All of a sudden, they are taken by surprise when this happens out of the blue. Well, this is definitely going to go down on books. It's one of the weirdest moments of my life. Sorry, that was a guess. I thought it was a wall and I put my hand up against it. The damn door opened and I about fell in. <laughs> That's one of the weirdest moments in your life. <laughs> you loaded it, now I loaded it. Oh boy. Something passed by again. What? Excuse me? Something that's passing by. That there's like a window or something? Is this equipment or something? Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We weren't even near it. Bullshit. We weren't even near it. Where'd that come from? Uh, the... Holy <laughs> According to stories from the internet, a boy was once inside the sanatorium who died while inside, but loved to play ball with people. And in this video, a ball can be seen rolling toward the camera crew. So is this the ghost of Timmy, trying to play ball one last time? It certainly seems- I want to say, uh, no. Because it looks like it rolls from where the guy was standing towards that direction. I'm, I'm calling bull. It's like it. I'm sorry. Look, we got big brains on this channel.
you are a member of this channel, you have big brains too. My, my brain's so big that I had to grow this beard to cover up my second brain. That's right, I have two brains. You can't fool me. No. Over on TikTok, a user named WB Paranormal shared a video to their account, which follows a woman who is outside camping somewhere when she suddenly spots something not too far in the distance that shakes her to the core. She is so freaked out by it that she attempts to capture the incident on camera, stating, nobody's ever gonna believe this. It may take a moment for you to see it, but look right beside the tent and you will see something genuinely terrifying. Oh my God, nobody is gonna ever believe this. All right, we're going, we're going back inside. Did you see it? A tall figure with a completely white head seems to be peeking at the woman filming before the video ultimately shuts okay. off without warning. The woman says that she's going to go back inside for safety and we can only hope that she was safe. But I don't think she was camping. I mean, who brings a uh, riding lawnmower camping and after she stopped recording. By its tall appearance and dark clothing and its white face, it almost looks like the Slender Man or some other strange shadow figure. What do you think this mysterious stranger is? And maybe even better, what do you think their intentions were? For now, it remains a mystery. They want we can only moment. hope that we and the woman in the video get answers someday. The cursed video subreddit is exactly how it sounds. It's full of videos that are allegedly cursed, and even if they aren't, they're still incredibly chilling and are sure to keep you awake at night. This particular Great. video was posted to the subreddit six months ago and shows a hidden doll with graffiti on it, reading, do not open. Of course, this is pretty ominous, but somehow, this particular person was not afraid and decided he would open it anyway just to see what exactly was inside, his curiosity getting the better of him. For a couple of seconds, it seems as though this hidden room actually has nothing to hide. But that doesn't stop the Reddit user from looking around. But in just a few seconds, he will find out the hard way that he is absolutely not welcome there. What the? <laughs> what? A mysterious figure dressed in all black spots the uploader and then proceeds to make loud and angry groaning sounds before charging at the man, causing him to exit the room immediately and slam the door shut. It doesn't take him too long to realize that he may be in serious danger, which is when he proceeds to run away from the area at once. Yeah. This video definitely does make you wonder though, what exactly is inside this area that the man dressed in black wants to hide from the general public? And also, where exactly is this room? What country is it in? Is it all just one big hoax? I mean, it could just be his buddy like- any answers anytime soon. But for now, we can all discuss this video and get creeped out by it. I guess. It's no secret that the Conjuring series of films are some of the most terrifying mainstream horror movies of the past decade. Yeah. With three main entries in the franchise being released now, the series has gone to various different locations, but easily the most chilling has to be the house from the first movie. The real Conjuring House is located in Harrisville on Rhode Island and yeah. was recently purchased by new owners. Take a look at these videos that were filmed inside the Conjuring House by the new owners to get a good taste as to how creepy this place actually is.
dark mist. Something being knocked over. These people are just sitting there like, it's whatever. As you can see, books getting thrown to the ground all by themselves and shadow figures seemingly looming through hallways are just a few of the chilling things that have occurred in this extremely frightening place recently. This seems to further prove that the events of which The Conjuring was based on may be actually were true. But I'll leave it up for you guys to decide on whether these videos show real paranormal activity. I'd burn it. I'd burn it down. I would not be dealing with that mess. Activity. Why would you even want to buy that place? I don't know. It would be kind of cool to be like, where you, where's your house? You, you know the conjuring house? Yeah. Burn it. It's mine. That would be cool. Okay, I, I, I get the premise of wanting to buy something it. else Never entirely. Mind. The Norwood Hotel, located in Winnipeg, Manitoba, is your typical hotel that you would spend a couple of nights at and not think twice about the place. You go to bed, wake up and leave the next morning, like any other hotel. But if you plan to visit the place yourself, do not visit room 313. It is said to be very haunted and full of unusual activity. And this video published by the paranormal investigation channel Paranormies showcases yeah, exactly this. that. Yeah, In the upload, that's... the group decides to venture inside room. Yeah, we've seen this. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you uh. did, then subscribe for more. Yeah, we've seen this one once before. I think we've seen it in the last video, actually. Pretty sure. If y'all want to see it, head on over to my man Spook's page. Give it a watch. It, it's pretty good. Like, yeah. I liked it. I liked it. All right. So this is Nuke's top five. Top five ghost videos to scare your inner demons. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Top five ghosts caught on camera. The Lighthouse Keeper. If you're one of the very few people who have never watched BuzzFeed Unsolved on YouTube, the series can basically be summarized like this. It's sort of a ghost hunting show but not a typical one. The show has two hosts, Ryan and Shane. Now Shane is a diehard skeptic of the paranormal. Anytime there's like any chance of sort of any kind of mechanical failure or just doors in general, people are always like, but it, well, the door opens, so that's ghost. I don't want to argue with you on this. If you're really, if you find it compelling, that's, I'm happy for I you. I do find it compelling. Yeah, oh, great. I'm happy, I'm happy for me too. Good. And then there's Ryan, who is the polar opposite. It might even be just a bit too scared of the supernatural. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Ah! Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, In each episode, the two hosts visit allegedly haunted places. <laughs> this will do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. <laughs> oh, it's an automatic one. <laughs> and investigate to search for real paranormal evidence. This week on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we investigate uh, St. Augustine Lighthouse as part of our ongoing investigation into the question, are ghosts real? No. In this episode, they are investigating the notoriously haunted St. Augustine Lighthouse in Florida. 
the lighthouse was completed in 1874 and has seen its fair share of tragedy over the nearly 200 years that it has been guiding sailors home from the sea. Mm. BuzzFeed Unsolved hosts Ryan and Shane begin their investigation at the historic Lightkeeper's house, which is right beside the lighthouse. People say that they have heard the endless and painful coughing of the spirit of a man named William Harn. He was the very first keeper of the lighthouse back in the 1800s. Harn tragically passed away inside the house of malaria and the lung disease tuberculosis. Oh, when they try God. to reach out to the spirit of William, the two friends capture something truly bizarre. All right, we're going to give you some silence here, William. If there's anything you'd like to say to us, maybe a message you wish you could have communicated before you left Earth. Huh. I'm going to sit in one of these little tiny chairs and make me look like you. I'm going to give you some silence right now. Ryan and Shane captured the unexplained sound of someone coughing, just like guests claim to have heard mm. in the past. Could this be the spirit of William who died of tuberculosis? Next, Ryan and Shane finally enter the actual lighthouse. Possibly. Look, tuberculosis, tu tuber tuberculosis is no joke. I mean, it killed so much. Mm. which is said to be a hotbed of paranormal activity. The best ghost evidence of all time, in my opinion, or at least some of it, has been caught right here in this little rotunda. I mean, they caught an apparition full out just peeking over the railing. It is said that paranormal investigators always have an experience in the lighthouse when they are alone. So to test this theory, both Ryan and Shane will be locked inside separately to investigate. Shane heads in first for his solo investigation, but he doesn't really experience much. All right, so I'm going in there, I'm going to the top. Yeah. And I'm coming back down. Yeah, that's the what you do in a staircase, yeah. Sounds good. This is high time for a ghoul to come out and spook me. So far, no ghouls. This is allegedly the site of a lot of FBAs or full-bodied apparitions. I feel nothing. I really don't. I don't get any vibes. I haven't felt anything strange all night. All right. See you later, dudes. Next, it's Ryan's turn. And now, before we proceed, it should be noted here that during the building of the lighthouse, a young girl named Eliza tragically lost her life while playing at the construction site. Visitors... Why would you let your child play at the construction site? have reported seeing a young girl in a red dress inside the lighthouse who just faded away into thin air right before their eyes. Everyone who's gone in there has seen something for the most part if they've gone by themselves. You know what? I'm eager to add my name to that roster. Bye. Eliza. Ryan is freaked out as he gets some very <laughs> weird direct responses on his spirit. This man's so scary. Oh god. Box. One of the answers being Eliza, the name of the child that passed away. Why are you leaving because of that thing scared? Way at the lighthouse. 
Now, Shane, on the other hand, didn't capture anything and is completely unimpressed with the whole location. But after the video is uploaded to YouTube, many viewers pointed out that skeptical Shane might have actually caught the most compelling and absolutely chilling evidence of all. This is high time for a ghoul to come out and spook me. So far, no ghouls. Did you see it? Watch again. This is high time for a ghoul to come out and spook me. So far, no ghouls. A dark figure of a man can be seen standing at the bottom of the lighthouse. When the f Ooh, I didn't see that before. Whoa. Footage is bright and the man has no distinguishable features and looks more like a black mass than a person. Now, Shane was completely alone inside the lighthouse when he filmed. So just who or what is this? Could it be the ghost of one of the many deceased keepers who are said to haunt the lighthouse? That's creepy. You decide. I don't like that. <clears throat> All right, see you later, dudes. The final night. Alexander Labuzov from Russia says that he's been living in the same apartment for over three years, when suddenly and inexplicably, strange paranormal things began to happen around his home. Loud, unexplained noises would wake him up in the middle of the night. Things around the house would move on their own. And scariest of all, one night when he was in bed, sound asleep, someone or something suddenly grabbed onto his wrist, squeezing hard. He jerked his arm away and lurched out of bed, searching his room. But there was no one there. He says that the paranormal activity in his apartment just increased over time until eventually he decided to just move out. So Alex is set to move out of his apartment the next day, but he decides to try to record the strange supernatural activity one- I'd sleep in my car that last night. Nobody could tell me otherwise, but I'm just saying. If I was gone the next day, I would be out of my car. I'd be like, hey, bro, I'm, I'm crashing with you for the night. I, I would not stay there. No, not the last night, because they're going to be like, y'all, you leaving? We're going to give you something to leave and remember us by. Last time. This video was meant to be Alex's last night in his apartment. First, he sits in front of his camera and explains what's been going on in his apartment. As he's talking, he hears something strange. I just went and the light. I jumped out of my bed and turned on the light. Anyone in my position would be scared. Something moved somewhere in the apartment and Alex believes it might have been the kitchen cabinet door. He decides to set up his camera in his bedroom and leaves for two hours to meet up with a friend. Hello? Hello. Da, 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 da. Yes, sure, I will come soon. No way, no way. Okay, see. No, no. Alex turns off the light and leaves. But what happens while he's gone is truly bizarre. Do you see this mess?
Alex returns home and just goes to bed. The next day, he discovers that his landlord is unavailable to pick up his apartment keys. And after reviewing his footage, Alex is unsatisfied with the potato quality video he has recorded in his dark apartment. So, he decides to stay one more night, this time leaving the camera recording but with the lights on. Just like the night before, he again leaves to meet up with a friend. The camera captures something downright creepy. Now see, he's just asking for it. I would have done, like, I don't care. The key's in the mailbox. Do what you do, bro. I'm out. No. See, you don't want him there either. You don't want him there either. Huh? No. He would be in the mailbox. I'd be like, look, no. Mm -mm. Sorry about you, bro. I'd be gone. Done dipped. Deuces. Audi. Nope. Alex is shocked when he comes home as he discovers that his camera has somehow flipped upside down all on its own. He grabs the camera and begins to film his thoughts on the strange situation. What happens next is absolutely terrifying. So as I see we have caught a lot today. It's effing crazy. What do we have here? <laughs> it's crazy. <sighs> what can I say? It was the last day, so. Поэтому мы уже. Was this? Was, was that just like a set of legs standing there? It's so hard to... I can't describe this. We all know what that is. I'd be gone. A pair of legs can be seen standing right behind Alex in the doorway. The legs appear to have no torso and disappear before Alex can even turn around. So, did Alex capture proof of the paranormal in his apartment? Or is it illusion? I leave it up to you uh, to decide. I don't think that's... You can see the... F oh, you can see the foot. Hold on. You can see the foot. Hold on. You can see the foot. Something. You can see the feet, both feet. You can see the you, no. You can see the waistband. That, that's no illusion. That's something. An illusion. Viewer videos. 
No. Ethan Budzinski was on a family vacation in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania when strange things began to happen in his rented Airbnb home. Late one night, Ethan and his family hear the sound of a baby crying from somewhere in the house. Now Ethan's two young nephews are asleep in bed upstairs, so he immediately runs up to check on them, only to find that they are both quietly asleep in bed. This occurs several times. Ethan hears crying, then goes upstairs to find the children quietly asleep. So the next time Ethan hears the crying, he pulls out his phone and starts recording. The eerie sound of a child crying can indeed be heard coming from somewhere upstairs. Both Ethan and a family member hear the sound, but when he heads upstairs to check, just like before, the children are fast asleep and not making a sound. So just where is this strange, unexplained crying coming from? Well, you can Let hear me know what you think. Yeah, you can plainly hear a baby crying. Down in the comments. A British Nukes Top 5 viewer who Burn wishes it. to remain anonymous, we'll call her Jen, says that she had a chilling experience that wasn't paranormal, but was terrifying nonetheless. And as I've personally always said on this channel, real people can be much scarier than anything supernatural. So late one night around midnight, Jen starts receiving messages from a guy on Facebook. At first, she plays along, but the messages from the stranger just get creepier and creepier. I'll correct some of the typos and slang and save you from listening to me doing a terrible Thank you. British accent. But what you see on screen are the actual messages. So, at one point, the guy suddenly writes, Well, since you're up, uh, can I come and meet you then? Yes, I am mental. I'm on my way down to your house. I'll ring when I'm outside. Thinking he's joking, Jen laughs it off, writing back, you don't even know where I live. And then the guy starts trying to creepily call her on Facebook, because it turns out that he does actually know exactly where she lives. He oh, types, God. you live next to my granny's house on the corner. Then he continues to call her. Next to my granny's house on the corner, Jonathan. Things go from bad to worse because he actually shows up right in front of her house. Did you see us? Don't make me knock, please. He messages. I'm outside the center window right now. Jen is now understandably completely freaked out. She tells the guy that she is not coming out under any circumstances, but he won't take no for an answer. Is that your window at the front? How do I get in your back garden? Jen replies, you don't, and ends the conversation. But it did not end there. Jen says the disturbed young man stood in front of her house for almost two hours. He eventually left after her family members went outside and told him to leave or they would call the police. So I guess the takeaway is either be careful of who you talk to online or simply Facebook sucks.
Both. I agree with both of those statements. Be careful who you talk to, and Facebook does so. Susan's Courtside Cafe in Kissimmee, Florida was originally built in 1912, and over most of the last 100 years, the building was actually a small home for many families and individuals. Locals believe that the building the cafe is in is haunted by the spirits of its former residents. Workers at the cafe say that they often hear unexplained noises while working late at night, and both the staff and visitors claim to have seen bizarre shadow figures throughout the restaurant. Nuke's top five viewer, Valerie Ann, says that she went on a Halloween ghost tour in Kissimmee that stopped at the allegedly haunted Susan's Courtside Cafe, and it seems that the rumors of paranormal activity might be true. Valerie caught this strange footage. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw something walk by. Really? Did you see it? It's yeah, a little hard yeah. to make out, but a dark figure seems to quickly pass through the cafe dining room before just oh. disappearing. Someone in the tour group mentions it, but Valerie Ann is shocked when she discovers that she actually caught the apparition on camera. She says that she has no idea who or what this mysterious figure could be. Screw what? That. No. What do you think? I'd laugh. The home no, of the gin. <laughs> One of the OG Saudi door kicking ghost hunters that I first featured on this channel, Adventurer Allah, is back with an all new YouTube channel. In this live stream, Allah goes to investigate a large abandoned building that is said to be haunted by an evil presence or gin. As he broadcasts his exploration live, things take a terrifying turn. Is your mom? اي شيء انا ما اشوفه على طول على طول على الخاص بسم الله بسم الله الله اكبر Even though there's no power in the building, the ceiling fan begins to rotate on its own. Then a heavy table falls nope. over right behind Allah. Freaked out, he that, runs away. That, it didn't fall, bro. That got pushed. Away, retreating care. to a different section nope. of the large building. But little does Allah know, things are about to get even creepier. Hasbi <laughs> Allah. الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يود حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم من كان في هذا المكان سحر فابطل الله أكبر Don't go to Why would you go to the door that just slammed? Why? Why? في أحد؟ في أحد في المكان؟ This fool, no. It slammed the door. Not to be like, boom. 
oh, if I slam this door, he's going to come over here and, you know, we, we're going to hang. They slam the door because they don't want you over there. Why would you go over there? Bismillah. Dude, I don't think it cares about your praying. I think that's making him more angry. And I'm just, I would run away. I would just run. ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسأكل سنة السماوات والأرض A terrifying dark mist-like figure can be seen in a doorway and a pair of crutches aggressively flies across the room right in front of the terrified explorer He investigates the area, but nothing there The mysterious dark mist has simply disappeared But it's not over yet Oh my god God, why is he still there? Leave, bro. Bismillah. <laughs> A plate falls off a table on its own, then another ceiling fan begins to rotate, and a large heavy closet moves as if pushed by some powerful unseen force. No. Something is thrown at Allah, injuring his foot. And after that, he's had about enough. Allah decides to just get out of there and end his live stream. So did adventurer Allah capture a real haunting by a terrifying jinn? Or is it all just a very elaborate hoax? At this point, it really would not matter to me. I would be gone. I would have done scared the crap out of myself and left. I'm not even going to lie about it. Like, no. You decide. No. Nope. Return to the Red House. Paranormal investigator Kevin Barranco from the YouTube channel Archivo Extinto returns to explore the historic La Casa Colorada, or the Red House, in Guadalajara, Mexico. The house was built in 1923, and it is said that the remote and secluded location became a place where cults performed dark rituals. Those brave enough to explore the old house claim to have seen witches, demons, and even the skeletal female figure of Santa Muerte, a Mexican saint who is said to wear a long cloak and be the personification of death itself. Now, two months ago, I featured Kevin's first visit to the Red House years ago. While exploring the house with his friends, the group captured something that they simply couldn't explain. <laughs> Aí, hay frases, no sé, quizás unas por vandalismo, otras por sectas, la verdad es que no... It said there's sentences all over the walls, maybe some was written by vandals, maybe some was written by cults or witches, we don't really know their meaning. Desconocemos el significado y la verdad es que no, no queremos saber. And they don't want to know it either. Aquí hace mucho frío, eh? Sí, hace bastante. Aquí hace mucho frío, eh? Sí, hace bastante. Wow, no. Aquí hace mucho frío, eh? Sí, hace bastante. Cut to two years later. After many requests from his fans, paranormal investigator Kevin returns to the quote red house 
in hopes of capturing even more paranormal evidence. But this time, he decides to go back all alone, as you might. He's dumb. I'm sorry. I know that's mean to say, but that's dumb. Guess it did not go well. Kevin sets up several static cameras around the house. Then he lights three candles and starts to ask questions to who or whatever might be haunting the abandoned home. Kevin is using an English spirit box app and translates the responses to Spanish. Before long, very strange things start to happen. Voy a utilizar Scarlett, ¿podrías hacerme daño? Are you able to hurt me? That's a... Yes. Don't ask. Just no. Try. Okay, it's going to hurt him by throwing something at him. Yeah, you're screwed. True. No sé qué es Troll. Lo voy a buscar. Lanzar. Ay, cabrón. As Kevin repeats. That was a big old brick he was going to throw at your face. The word throw in Spanish. A heavy piece of rubble is seemingly thrown off the edge of a large oh. hole in the wall. Kevin grabs his camera and walks through the building in search of anything paranormal. see really is something really really dark right there it kind of like look like it's oh and the man just ran out of light he said so he... Oh, he's got light again Ghost Hunter's light begins to fail, then he hears a noise and turns. Without knowing it at the time, he captures something strange in the darkness, quickly darting out of sight. Soon after, Kevin's camera begins to malfunction and things take an even more terrifying turn. How did I know he was going to say that? <laughs> Alright, I've done been, I was done been gone. Alright, so, I, I'm sorry, but this dude's a dumb, dumb bubblegum. I'm just saying. Went to this place before with someone else. It, it, it's known to have, like, cult members and all kinds of different crazy stuff that you don't want to be a part of. And he goes back alone. Mi cámara está trabada. Y vean, vean. Vean esto. Mi cámara está trabada. Vean. His camera is frozen, he says. So. Está trabada. 
Se trabó. Está completamente trabada, vean. La voy a apagar. No. Ven. Ahí se apagó, pero sigue trabada. ¿Me quieres hacer daño? Voy a cambiarla. Voy a sacarle la pila. Ya. Yeah. I don't like that noise. Kevin's camera completely locks up, and as he changes the battery, a wailing moan can be heard, followed by the mysterious voice of a woman. Yeah. I'm sorry, I do not like that sound. I don't know what it is, but I do not like it at all. He goes to investigate and captures what appears to be the same mysterious cloaked figure that the Archivo Extinto team captured just two years earlier. Kevin searches the building and the grounds, but he doesn't find anyone or anything. When his equipment continues to malfunction repeatedly, he decides he's had enough. He packs up and just gets out of there. So could it be that Kevin captured the apparition of Santa Muerte, the cloaked lady? I wouldn't have went there by myself, just saying. No. What, what if he would have hurt himself and been out there by himself? He of death? Let me know what you think. I don't know. You can watch this full three-part investigation know. over on the YouTube channel, no, Archivo Extinto. No, I will not. Man's a dumb, dumb bubble gum. I ain't doing it. Nope. Thanks for watching. Please follow me on... <sighs> All right, now we are going to a little bit of life of luxury, if I'm not mistaken. I just hope she's safe by the time we... All right, this was life of luxury. There's something wrong with her dad. Daddy. Get there. I don't know, he just doesn't seem like my dad anymore. There's something wrong with his skin when I felt it. Yo, let's go inside. Come on, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Stop, stop. Look out, look out. Hey guys, before this video starts, please check out our Instagrams. Our usernames are right here. So please follow both of our accounts if you want to support us. Hello, Lux Army. Let's try to smash 100,000 likes to show how strong we are. So for this episode, we received a report from an 18-year-old girl named Emily. Emily lives with her dad. And now, some people think life of luxury is... Quite scary. Yeah, it, it's 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 more of a like a jump thriller type scare, but it's not scary. But they have vivid imaginations, and I do like watching it. Eighteen-year-old girl named Emily. Emily lives with her dad, and she thinks that there's something off about him. Now Emily is visually impaired, so she can't even get a good look at him. She oh, says crap. that her dad won't let her in his room anymore, and he keeps giving her milk. She also says that he started smelling horrible, almost like a sewer. Now, Emily's tried to contact her mom, but her dad said that she's taking a trip, even though her mom left her phone at home. So today, we're going to drive out to Emily's house and try to figure out why her dad started acting like this. Let's go. So what are you thinking about this, Parker? Bro, if her dad is a danger to her, I'm concerned that she's staying in that house. Bro, I'm more worried about the fact that her mother disappeared. I think it's our responsibility to make sure that she's okay. I just hope she's safe by the time we get there. Hmm. 
Yo, dude, we're here. This is it. All right, cool. All right, see what this guy has to say. All right, dude, let's do this. Let's do this. So serious. Hey, Emily. Hi there. Hi. So nice to meet you. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Nice to meet you. Come in. We have to be quiet. Uh, he's away from you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Emily. Thank you uh, for letting us sit down with you. Can you explain to us further what's been going on? I heard you talking to someone last night. Him? You mean your dad? I don't know. He just doesn't seem like my dad anymore. He called me the wrong name yesterday, and there's something wrong with his skin when I felt it. Is there anything that you think could have caused this change? He went out to the woods hunting a few weeks ago, and when he came back, he was different. I know this sounds bad, and he's my dad, and I love him so much, but he's really scared of me, and I want to run away. Hey, it's all right. Don't think like that. Since my mom's gone, I feel really alone. You don't have to be scared while we're here. We're going to find out what's going on. Oh, one more thing I didn't tell you. When he came home, he was... This is the first time I think I've ever seen Chester Bray. This is great. Well, I've been drinking it for a while. You've been drinking this for a while? Yeah. He's been giving me a lot of milk lately. You think there's something in it? All right, Emily, we're going to need to uh, place cameras all around <laughs> your house and one in his room mm -hmm. just to find out what's going on here. Okay. Okay, let's go. Don't drink that. Why? Because it's great. Is she can't see how <laughs> is she supposed to know, bro? Alright, let's just uh, set up some of these cameras now. Here, it's good. Let's put a camera on this. Hi, Emily, do you mind if we put a camera in your room for tonight? Sure. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I think we're all good. Uh, we can... Okay, so let's just not think about this too much tonight. Uh, we got the camera rolling. We're, we're not gonna let anything happen to you, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, all right, uh, let's all right. go. Good night, guys. Right here, dude. Alright, so it's about 2 in the morning right now. We're watching the cameras that we put in this house. We got one in her bedroom, her dad's bedroom, the hallway. Just gotta wait it out to uh, see what happens. Bro, look what he's doing right now. He's just facing the wall. I mean, he's just sitting there. Let's just calm down and wait till he starts actually doing something. Alright. Was it just me or did that fool's head like turn more than like an, like an owl? Hmm. 
Why is he staring at the camera like Yo, that? Dude, look at this. Wake up. Look at this. Look, look. What's he doing in there? Is that someone's arm? Who's he letting in there, dude? Who is that? Yo, let's go you. inside. Come on. We gotta go. We gotta go. go. Let's go. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? Wait, what's going on here? What are you doing? What's going on, man? Go back to sleep, baby doll. Sleep does the work. Why are you doing this to your daughter? Don't you love her? There was an arm. Who was that? What's wrong with you? Why don't you talk? Say something. I really don't understand. What's wrong with this guy? Dude, this is creeping me out. Yo, you know, I'm sick of this, dude. I'm getting the police involved. Ah, what are you- ah! Ah! Let's go. Here. Oh my goodness. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Step, watch your step. Watch your step. You're weak. Are these just clothes? Oh. No, get in front. Get in front. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my all right, just stay calm. Just stay calm. It's all right. We're going to find someplace else to stay. Yo, look out. Look out. What is that over there? I don't know. What is that? What the hell are you doing here? All right, listen. It's all right, Emmett. It's all right. We're, we're going to find someplace for you to stay, okay? Okay. Even if you stay with us. We drove Emily back to our house to spend the night. We still have no idea what happened to her father. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. If this video hits one- <laughs> Oh god, you gotta, you gotta love it. Alright. And as always, we are going to end with a Mr. Bala. Today, we're gonna look at- and this is called Influencers Jump Into a Pool of Poison. Like YouTube influencers and stuff? I'm not jumping to a pool of poison for no one. I don't care. No. At three places you can't go and people who went there anyways. But before we get into today's story. In early 2020, a very popular Russian Instagram influencer named Ekaterina Dedenko was getting ready to celebrate her 29th birthday. She, along with her husband and some of her influencer friends, were planning to enjoy the occasion at a popular spa in Moscow, Russia. The group rented out a private section of the spa that included a steam room and a small indoor pool. And then once the reservations were made, Dedenko and all of her influencer friends began eagerly talking about how excited they were about this party on their various social media accounts. When the day finally came, February 28th, which was Dedenko's birthday, Dedenko, her husband, and the eight other people they invited, they all descended on this spa. So they go inside, they go back to their private area, and it's great. There's food, there's alcohol, there's music, they're jumping into the pool and getting in the hot tub, and everyone's just having a great time. Sounds like fun. No, I ain't gonna lie. Everyone's taking pictures and filming and live streaming. I mean, it's really going as well as it possibly could be. And then at some point, Dedenko's husband signals the rest of the group, minus Dedenko, and they all begin to pull out these white hazardous materials suits. Imagine what you would see in a movie if there was some huge chemical leak, a full body white suit with a mask. And so they're all putting on these hazmat suits, and they give one to Dedenko, who puts it on. Okay. What kind of event are these fools doing? Why why do they need hazmat suits? I don't, I don't like where this is I don't like where this is going in any way, shape, or form one as well, and they tell her this is part of her big surprise. Now it's unclear if I wouldn't trust I wouldn't trust any of them. actually didn't know what was going to happen next, or if she's just pretending to be surprised because it would do better on social media because this is all being filmed and she's an influencer. But either way, she puts on her hazmat suit, and once everyone has their suits on, Dedenko's husband wheeled in this huge cooler like you would bring to a picnic. 
and he placed it right on the edge of the pool. When he opened the lid, the crowd all gasped and laughed and smiled and filmed as these huge clouds of smoke or steam came pouring out of it. What it was, was roughly 55 pounds of dry ice. Dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide. It's commonly used for things like refrigerating perishable goods for long periods of time because dry ice stays cold for a really long time. Also, because of the huge white gas clouds that come off of dry ice, it's also very commonly used as a sort of spooky decoration because you have these very cool white clouds going everywhere. And in fact, that's what Tadenko's husband planned to use this dry ice for. He was going to dump it into the pool and create those big white gas clouds all over the pool. The reason they call it dry ice is because as it starts to heat up, it doesn't melt into a liquid state the way frozen water does. Turns into gas. Instead, it goes directly from a solid state to a gas state. Dry ice is considered to be quite hazardous if it's handled inappropriately, and while these partygoers all had their hazmat suits on, it's unlikely they were actually wearing them for safety. It's far more likely they were wearing them because it would look good on social media and would kind of hype up the stunt they were about to do. And so after the dry ice was revealed inside of this cooler, Tadenko's husband and another of the partygoers grabbed the sides of the cooler and they dumped its contents directly into the water. And as soon as the dry ice hit the water, it rapidly began to warm up, which caused a massive, almost explosion of carbon dioxide gas to completely fill the lower half of the room. Now, none of the partygoers are even a little bit phased by what's happening. They don't realize how dangerous this actually is. And so they're just filming and laughing and kind of thinking this is so funny. And then Dedenko's husband actually leaps through the cloud into the water and kind of disappears below. And then shortly after, after that too okay that's stupid because there's going to be like minimal amount of oxygen that these people are going to die other party goers would also leap into the pool one of the main reasons dry ice is considered to be so hazardous if handled inappropriately is because dry ice emits that carbon dioxide gas which at high concentrations will displace oxygen so imagine if you're in a very small room that has very poor ventilation. If you had lots of carbon dioxide in there, you would suffocate. So this indoor pool was a small confined space with poor ventilation. And so the seven people on the pool deck, shortly after this dry ice has been tossed into the pool, they started to realize it was really hard to breathe because the oxygen was basically being sucked out of the room. And so they were able to turn and actually run out of the pool deck before it was too late. Meanwhile, Dedenko's husband and the other two people who leapt into the pool, when they came back to the surface, they breathed in thinking they would be breathing in oxygen, but instead they breathed in an entire lungful of carbon dioxide, which in addition to displacing oxygen at higher concentrations inside of confined spaces with poor ventilation. So, Anyone knows that if you breathe in straight up, you're going to die. Plain and simple, I, 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 there's no sugarcoating. You're 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 going to die. Oh god! It is also poisonous at higher concentrations inside of confined spaces with poor ventilation. And so when the three of them surfaced, they breathed in this poisonous gas, which caused two of them to immediately pass out and then just die. While the third, Dedenko's husband, he managed to stay conscious enough that he was able to climb barely out of the pool and he tried to get to the door, but he couldn't get out in time. Eventually, he was pulled out and rushed to the hospital, but he would later die, not only from carbon dioxide poisoning, but also from having gone without oxygen for as long as he had. Whoa. I don't even know what to say about that. That's... That's horrible. On Saturday, September 30th, 2017, a staff member at a North Wales country club noticed water leaking out of the bottom of an outside wall of one of their many bungalows. These bungalows, which were generally just vacation rentals, were single-story white structures situated up on this beautiful green hillside. The staff member, after seeing this leak, they just turn around and go back to the front office and they tell their boss about it. And then shortly after, two maintenance workers were sent out to check on this leak. 
And so these two workers, they go over to this bungalow and they knock on the front door. But after a while, when no one comes to the door, they pull out their master key and they begin to turn the lock. And as they do that, they yell out just in case, hey, you know, we're here just to check on a leak. We have to come in. You know, it's a potential emergency. And so they open up the door, they swing it open, and no one comes to the door. It's still silent. And they're looking into this property. And what they see is on the left, from their perspective, is a kitchen. And on their right is a living room. It was basically one big room that had been designated for two distinct functions. And so they yelled out again into this bungalow, hey, you know, we're coming inside. We're just checking on this leak. And then they just walk straight across past the living room and past the kitchen to the back of this property where they reached a door. And this door led into a bedroom and this door was shut. And so just as a precaution, they knocked on the bedroom door, but nobody came to the door again. So they opened up the bedroom door and they looked into this room. And on the right side of the room, tucked up against the right wall, were two twin beds where the head of each bed was tucked up against the wall. And then in the middle of the room, at the base of these two beds, was a pile of unopened luggage. And so to the two maintenance workers, this told them that someone clearly... Yeah, someone's there. Where are they? Oh, that's... That's the real... Ooh, I don't know if I want to know where this is going. That's... It's got me a little worried was staying in this bungalow either they had just arrived or they were getting ready to leave but apparently they were not there right now and so the workers walked around the luggage and around the two beds so they walked on the left side of the room all the way to the back where there was another closed door and it went into the bathroom and based on where the leak had been coming out of the structure they believed it would be coming from this particular bathroom and so again, they get up to this door and they knock on it because, you know, they want to make sure no one's in there, but there's more silence. And so they open up the bathroom and right away they see water all over the bathroom floor. But as they scan around the bathroom, they look at the sink, they look at the shower, the toilet, none of them are overflowing or running. So it was not any of the usual suspects that had caused this leak. However, there was one other area in the bathroom that could have caused now it's getting a little how do we say time to worry so, something something's off here something's off here caused a water leak and that was the airing cupboard an airing cupboard is typically where you keep a hot water heater it's basically like a walk-in closet where the majority of the space is taken up by this heater and also generally people put in shelves in front of the heater to store their linens and towels and that sort of thing. And in this bungalow, the airing cupboard had its own door and it was right in the bathroom. And this door to the airing cupboard was right to the left of the door that led into the bathroom from the bedroom. And so these two workers, they reached over and they opened the door that led into this airing cupboard. And as soon as it swung in, they could tell right away where the leak was coming from and they could tell right away, they had a much, much bigger problem. Seven days earlier, 60 year old- Ooh, something, what happened? I don't know, something happened. Oh, crap, that's all I can say, that's all, that's all I can say. Old former policewoman, Mary Isherwood, arrived at the North Wales Country Club. She and her ex-husband had for a long time owned one of these bungalows. However, they almost never stayed in it. They basically used it as an income property, renting it out to vacation goers. But they had recently decided that they wanted to actually sell the property. And so before the sale became final, Mary had told her ex-husband that she just wanted to go and spend a week actually enjoying the property and actually take a vacation there. And so originally she and some friends were gonna go to this bungalow and spend a week there. But right before they were going to leave, Mary's friends all said they couldn't make it. And so Mary decided she would just go on her own. And so Mary arrives at this country club. It's late at night when she gets there. She gets to the bungalow. She puts her luggage down in her bedroom. And then instead of just kind of getting settled in and going to sleep, she decides she's gonna go exercise. Mary was incredibly fit and healthy. She loved playing golf and running and exercising. Okay, if you're gonna go exercise, why is she in this little room with the hot water tank? 
hiking in general, and she knew the club had a pool, and so she reached into her luggage and she just pulled out a bathing suit, she switched into that, and then she went down to the pool and did some lap swimming. After that, she came back to her room where she took a shower, and then she climbed in bed without any clothes on. That was just how Mary liked to sleep. And then at some point in the middle of the night, Mary woke up to go use the bathroom. And so she hopped out of her twin bed. She walked around to the door that led into the bathroom. She went inside, she did her business. And then afterwards, as she was attempting to go back into her bedroom, she accidentally grabbed the door handle of the airing cupboard, which was right to the left of the door leading back to her bedroom. She opened it up, it swung inward. She stepped into the airing cupboard, which was totally pitch black. And as she walked in, she might have bumped into the shelves or realized, you know, this was the wrong turn. But as soon as this happened, the door behind her had actually shut. And so she's inside of this tiny airing cupboard realizing, okay, this is not where I need to go. I've made a silly mistake. She turned around to grab the door handle to open the airing cupboard back up again. But when she grabbed the knob, it disintegrated in her hands. It broke into multiple parts and fell to the ground. Now, this oh, space crap. she is in is pitch black. She has no way of knowing which parts go where for this doorknob. And so by touch, she reached down and she grabbed all these pieces and she probably tried to put them together and put it back on this door to try to get it open, but she just couldn't do it. And so eventually, Mary would have realized this is a pretty serious situation. She was staying at this bungalow by herself and she was not expected to check out for another week. So no one was going to be checking on her. And without this doorknob, she could not open this closet door. It was a hard wooden door. The locking mechanism was solid. There was just no way to open it without this doorknob. And so Mary began banging on the door and screaming out for help, but her That's horrible. Good. God. Her bungalow was not actually connected to any other structures. It was a standalone. And so her voice did not carry very far and the banging sounds she was making, those also did not carry very far. And so no one heard her. And so after several hours, she's just standing in this closet, probably thinking to herself, how in the world did I get myself in this position? But after the initial shock of this totally bizarre situation she was in had worn off, she decided to act. And so she turned away from the door and she faced towards the back of this closet. She would have been face to face with a row of shelves, but she wouldn't have been able to see the shelves because it was totally dark. And then beyond the shelves, farther into this closet was the actual hot water heater. There was no wall behind the shelves. Basically there was a space behind the shelves where this heater was. And so Mary grabbed one of these shelves and she managed to break it off the wall. And then she turned around and used this piece of wood and tried to smash the door, but very quickly realized that was just gonna do nothing. However, she began striking the wall right next to the door and she realized she could break through the drywall. She was starting to kind of burrow a hole. And so maybe she thought to herself, if I can just build a hole big enough right next to the door, I can reach through the hole and maybe open this cupboard from the outside. And so she began using the shelf to smash this wall and she's burrowing as fast as she can, but the progress must have been very, very slow because she decides she needs a different tool. So she turns back around, so she's facing the shelves again, and she breaks down a few more shelves to clear a path to get to the water heater. And then once she could step past the shelves, once there was a path, she got right in front of this water heater, and then by touch began feeling around for any pipes extending off of the heater. And when she found one, she got a good grip of it, and she began yanking and tugging on it until she managed to rip a piece of pipe off of the hot water heater. Now, as soon as she did that, she now had a pipe that was a far better tool for burrowing and creating this hole in the wall. However, as soon as that pipe broke off, cold water began leaking out of this hot water heater, the water that had not been heated yet. And it was being sprayed all over the inside of this cupboard. Now, this was a very small space, and so there was no way for Mary to get out from under this cold water. And so it was a shocking and probably very painful experience but she now had her tool and figured, okay, you know, this is awful, but I'll just use this tool, I'll burrow this hole, I'll get this cupboard open, and I'll get out of here. And so with the water raining down on her, Mary used her new piece of pipe and began digging and burrowing at that spot right next to the door. 
But after a while, probably several hours, she struck a brick wall. There was no way she could actually push through this wall and oh, reach around yeah. and open the cupboard door. There was nothing she could do. It was a dead end. And so totally devastated and probably very exhausted from all the energy she used to burrow this hole, she stopped. She's still getting rained down on by all this freezing cold water. And instead of just totally giving up, she just turned and faced the wall that was leading into her bedroom. And she began digging again, using this tool all over again to now dig a new hole on this other wall, most likely hoping that she could literally burrow a hole big enough that she could actually crawl through into her bedroom and escape. And so after several more hours of digging as fast and as hard as she could, while also periodically banging on the door and screaming out for help, she did eventually push through into her bedroom. However, in a cruel twist of fate, when she did finally poke through this wall, there was no bricks in the way, she hit what felt like another dead end. But in fact, what it was, was a picture frame with a glass cover across it had been screwed onto the wall in her bedroom. And this painting was right over where she was digging this hole. And so in her totally exhausted and panicked and saddened and scared state, she hits the back of this painting. And again, it's pitch black and she's feeling through the hole most likely. And she's touching this hard back of this painting and she's realizing, oh my goodness, I've hit another dead end. There's nowhere for me to go. Even though in reality, she could have very easily just broken through that frame and then maybe made the hole a little bit bigger and then she could have squeezed through it and escaped but she didn't know that, and so she eventually just slouched to the ground and accepted her fate. Six days later, when those two maintenance workers opened <clears throat> the airing cupboard door, they found Mary's body slumped up against the wall inside this closet. She had died of hypothermia. It would turn out other residents of the other bungalows nearby heard banging coming from this bungalow on Saturday night, the night that Mary actually got stuck, and then they also heard the banging the following morning, on Sunday morning but none of the other residents reported it because they believed it was just construction or some other maintenance work. However, there was one couple staying in one of the nearby bungalows that thought there was something off about this banging. And they told each other, if the banging persists past 5 p.m. on Sunday, so that's the day after Mary got stuck, this couple told each other that if it continues past 5 p.m., we'll report it. But as it happened, Mary stopped banging on the walls and yelling for help right around 5 p.m. on Sunday. And so this couple, right as they're getting ready to go tell the front desk, the banging stopped and so they stopped worrying about it. It's unclear how long Mary survived after she stopped banging around 5 p.m. on Sunday. It could have been minutes, it could have been hours, it could have been days. Mary's family would ultimately sue the country club for negligence. However, the outcomes of this case have not been made public. That's horrific. This poor lady. Oh my god. On July 30th, 2013, 56 year old Roger Miro grabbed a bag of trash from his apartment and then walked out into the hall. He turned right and walked down the hall until he reached the trash chute, which was right on the side of the wall. He opened it up. It was like a mailbox. He opened it up. He dropped his trash bag inside. He closed the trash chute and then walked back to his apartment. When he got back inside, he instinctively reached down to his right pocket to grab his cell phone, but it wasn't there. So he grabbed his left pocket, wasn't there either. He checked his back pockets, he's fishing around, and he realizes he doesn't have his phone. So he figures, okay, I must have put it down somewhere in my apartment. Now, Roger was legally blind, so it made looking for small things in his apartment quite difficult. But nonetheless, he began looking all over his apartment for his phone. He started in the kitchen, he looked all over the place, checked all the surfaces, no cell phone. He went to the living room, to the bedroom, to the bathroom, but there was no cell phone. And so Roger thought maybe when he walked to the trash chute, he might have dropped the phone in the hallway. And so he left his apartment, he turned right, and he walked along, retracing his footsteps all the way to the trash chute. But all along the way, there was no phone on the ground. 
And so as he's standing in front of the opening to this trash chute, he thinks to himself, you know, maybe I accidentally put my phone in the trash bag that I have now just dropped down this trash chute. And so as Roger is standing there wondering what he's supposed to do, one of his neighbors walked out into the hall and looked down and saw Roger standing there kind of inquisitively looking at this opening to the trash chute. And they asked Roger, you know, you know what's going on? And Roger explained the whole phone situation and the neighbor said, well, you know, hey, why don't you go down to the first floor and ask the manager if you can get the key to the trash room on the first floor where all the trash goes. And so Roger said, thank you very much. He turned and made his way to the elevator and the neighbor went back inside of his apartment. Roger went down to the first floor. He went to the manager's office. He knocked on the door. And when the door opened, the manager was obviously very busy with something. And Roger would say, hey, you know, I'm just looking to get into the trash room. I think I might have accidentally thrown my phone away. And I just want to have a look in the trash to see if I can find it. Now, this manager knew he was not allowed to let anybody who lived in the apartment complex go into that trash room on their own. It was a dangerous space. And so the manager was supposed to go in there with them if they needed to go in and look around in the trash. But right when Roger went up to the manager's office, the manager was waiting for a very important phone call and so couldn't really leave his office. But the manager kind of empathized with Roger and felt bad for him and said, okay, you know what? I'll just give you the key. You can go in there on your own and go looking for your cell phone. I hope you find it. And when you're done, just bring the key back here. And so Roger said, thank you very much. He took the key, he left the office and he made his way down the hall to the trash room. And when he got there, he unlocked the lock. We all see where this is going, right? Lock and went inside. A few hours later, Roger's wife came home from work and when she got to the apartment, Roger wasn't in there. She tried calling his cell phone, but he didn't pick up. And so she walked around the apartment, hoping there would be some indication of where he might have gone, like a letter or something, but there was nothing. And so Roger's wife was really concerned about this because this was totally out of character for her husband to go out at night on his own. And so she, operating on a gut instinct, called the police and reported him missing. And so a few minutes later, two police officers show up at this apartment building. They go up to Roger's apartment. They speak to Roger's wife. And then they go into the hall and they knock on some doors of other neighbors in the area. And after speaking with them, one of the neighbors who had seen Roger earlier said, you know, hey, he lost his phone. And the last I spoke to him, he was going to go down to the trash room to try to see if he could find his phone down there. And so the officers go down to the first floor, they go to the trash room and they try the door and it's unlocked. And when they open up the door and they look inside, right in the middle of this totally nondescript windowless room that basically looked like a basement, was this huge green dumpster. And above the green dumpster, high up on the ceiling was this round opening. And that was the bottom of the trash chute. So when people like Roger and the other people who lived in this apartment building dropped their trash down their respective trash chute on each floor, the trash would come tumbling down and literally fall out of the ceiling into a compactor. Oh God. Into the dumpster. Now, this dumpster was unique. It was not like other dumpsters where the top was just wide open and anyone could lob a bag of trash in. No, this dumpster, only the left side of the dumpster had an opening for trash. The rest of the dumpster was completely welded shut. There was no way into it. And so on the left side, where this dumpster opened up to allow trash to come in, it was positioned right underneath that opening in the ceiling where the trash came tumbling down. And it wasn't just an opening, it was like this near vertical tunnel that was welded on to the top of this dumpster. And it went straight up and it had this big open mouth at the top, almost like a funnel. And it was there to catch the trash as it fell down and it would go down this tunnel down into the dumpster. And so the gap between the ceiling and the top of this near vertical tunnel, the chute, was maybe three or four feet. And so when these officers looked into this room and they saw this dumpster and the chute and this hole in the ceiling, they also saw a ladder had been propped up on the left side of the dumpster right up against that near vertical tunnel as if someone was trying to look down into the dumpster itself. And so one of the officers walked over, they climbed up the ladder, and when they looked down into this tunnel, down into the dumpster, they found Roger. After a lengthy investigation, this is what is believed to have happened to him. 
After Roger got that key from the manager, he went to the trash room, he opened it up, and then he went inside and found this huge dumpster. And he would have quickly realized the only way to look into the dumpster, and so to go looking for his phone, was to look down into this tunnel. There was a ladder nearby, so he grabbed it and he propped it up against the side of the dumpster, and he climbed up on top and he looked down into the tunnel, down into the dumpster, and as he was looking, either some trash from the ceiling fell down and struck him, causing him to lose his balance, or he just slipped somehow. But either way, he lost his balance and he tumbled into the tunnel, down into the dumpster. And what Roger didn't know is as soon as that happened, he was doomed. Because this was not some ordinary dumpster. This was a trash compactor. And as soon as Roger fell... I knew it. I called it. That's horrible, but I'm just saying. Big brain down that tunnel, his body triggered an electronic sensor that activated the trash compactor. And so the way this worked is oh, there was this big crap. metal ram inside the dumpster. There's a ram. Okay, it, it, it's, it's getting worse than what I thought. Oh, God. I don't like where this is going. I'm on one side, and once it gets activated, it will press, there's a hydraulic press that pushes it all the way to the other side. So any of the trash in this dumpster will get compressed against the other side of the dumpster. And then at that point, the ram comes all the way back. And so every time trash would come down that chute, it would trigger that sensor, the trash compactor would start, it would flatten the trash, and so on and so forth. And so Roger has fallen down into the dumpster, he's triggered this compactor, but he's legally blind, he's probably dazed from the fall, and so by the time he realizes what's going on and he's kind of looking around, there is a hydraulic press bearing down on him. And so he probably tried to jump up the tunnel to try to escape the dumpster, but there was no ladder inside this tunnel and it was nearly vertical, so there was no way to climb up and out of it. And inside of the dumpster itself, there was no emergency shutoff switch and there was no emergency exit. And so at some point, it's assumed that Roger realized he was not going to be able to climb up the tunnel. And so he only had one direction he could go, which was to retreat to the far side of the dumpster, as far away from the press as he possibly could be. But once he got over there, there was nowhere for him to go. And so he was forced to just wait as this hydraulic press slowly moved across until it finally reached him and crushed him. Now we don't know if that very first hydraulic press actually killed Roger. All we know is Roger was trapped inside of this dumpster for several hours. And over that period of time, more and more trash was dropped down the chute activating Whoa. the press over and over and over again. And so by the time the police actually looked down into the dumpster, they saw a part of Roger's body and immediately they could tell there was nothing they could do. Roger was definitely deceased. Roger's wife would sue the manager of the apartment building as well as the company that owned the apartment building for their negligence, but the outcomes of that case have not been made public. So that's gonna do it guys. It Whoa. That was, that was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah. All right. That's it. We're done. We're out here. All right. So if you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange, or deranged, think about subscribing and leave a thumb up because it really helps out these days. As always, be good to one other. Be good to one another. There we go. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.